David here with Geek Legacy. I'm here with Kevin and James, the Angry Video Game Nerd. How about to talk to us about their feature length nerd? Yeah. So, uh, why don't you let us know what you did on the film, Kevin? Uh, James and I co directed. Uh, we also wrote it together mm -hmm. and uh, Double team. produced it together. We call that the Team Ampersands. Boom. Boom. Team Ampersands. That's how we roll. We so, put an ampersand in the credit, you know, <laughs> instead of an end, it uh, you know, makes it clear that the two work together as opposed to just having to share the same credit. Now when you co-direct with the star of the film, you really, you're doing all the work on set. He's, he's, he's the director like pre-production and post-production, but on production he's just like, I'll be in my trailer. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was a lot of that. I mean, he's often just like kind of like hanging out with the models on set, you know, mm -hmm. by the craft service table. No, this is, I, James is the, the hardest working man I've ever met in my life, so I can't say that uh, he wasn't like just like pounding it out as, as much as yeah. as much as I was, yeah. But we've been writing it since 2007, so 2006 mm -hmm. even, um, and uh, we've been doing this movie for about seven years now. And uh, on on set, I was you know the guy kind of behind the camera, mm -hmm. but he was definitely like you know we'd be looking at the shots and reviewing stuff mm -hmm. like that, and yeah. and James like spearheaded most of post, so we kind of like tag teamed it like that. Well, James, do you want to? Give us as much as you can about the story. I know we want the fans to see it, but what can you tell us about the story of the Angry Video Game Nerd movie? Uh, is, that the is that the title, Angry Video Game Nerd, the movie? Yeah, well, we thought about calling it The Angry Video Game Nerd, the movie, but I thought it was too many thes. So. <laughs> we utilized uh, the colon. Yeah, the double, the double colon. Yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, for the fans or for everybody in general? Everybody or, in general. No, I guess everybody in general would be more like a disgruntled gamer has to overcome his phobia of the worst video game of all time to save his fans. Yeah, it starts off like a road trip uh, to find the uh, resting place of the worst game of all time, E.T. on the Atari 2600, and uh, I'm sure everybody knows the story by now about the game burial. And you then should. it, uh, yeah, you should. And then it, um, it spins off many different twists and turns and just ramps up into a big action adventure sci-fi, but with a, a, a you know, comedy, a, a comedic tone all the way through. It's very uh, silly with a lot of sort of Looney Tunes type humor and uh, B-movie uh, vibe to it. We use a lot of uh, models effects, a lot of practical effects. Um, we've used every special effect that exists, I think. Like, there's been rear screen projection, there's been green screen, there's uh, um, suit monsters, you know? Um, a lot of strings and cheap toys. Yeah, there's been that. Yeah. some CG, so every kind of special effect is represented in this film. Yeah, a lot of old meets new, for sure. Lo-fi, hi-fi combo. Now, what kind of happy coincidence was it that they just had his big dig and they pulled up a bunch of ETs? Yeah. I mean, is that just a happy coincidence and you're happy to tag onto that? Or do you have anything to say about them finding it and beating you to the punch by <laughs> a month? By a month. <laughs> well, um, I mean, in the, in the beginning, we were maybe a little worried. It was like, oh, damn, there goes our ending, right? Um, well... Our movie is so uh, much science fiction and everything. The things that happen in our movie, it's so, so, so much an alternate reality that it, it doesn't affect it in any way because it's like the, if the things that happened in the movie happen in real life, then we're screwed. Can I curse? Sure, yeah. absolutely. Well, I would but say we're fucked we, we, that. We, we, but yeah. you on here to not curse. <laughs> it's like we were talking about it, and, and it's like I said. It's like, well, I think ours is like the magic version, and when you check yeah. out the movie, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. And it, you know, it, it's, I mean, it's a shock. It's like, like, say you're making a movie about the Loch Ness Monster and then they drain Loch Ness all of a sudden. But things like that happen. You know, in 1931, when the Dracula film came out, the, the famous one with Bela Lugosi, they excavated Dracula's tomb that same year. And I've never been able to figure out if it was coincidence or not or what the deal was. So things just, planets align, things happen, yeah. What was it like to finally screen it in front of an audience earlier this week in LA? It was amazing. And yes, I mean, I think seven years, it depends like when you count, like if you count like when we started uh, writing it, we came with the idea late 2006, but we began writing it in 2007 and uh, we started shooting in 2012. So it's been, been two years since we shot it and now we finally screened it at the historic Egyptian theater in Hollywood. and. Uh, it was amazing. Like people were just like lined up outside, and uh, 
Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. The the fans were great. It was it's so good. You know, you're writing you're writing this thing for two years, and we're flying yeah. back and forth between Philadelphia and Los Angeles, and you you well, got we wrote these it for more than that, but absolutely yeah. on yeah. Skype and everywhere else. We shot it for two years. Though. Several different couches, um, coffee shops, or whatever. But you write these lines that you think are jokes. You know what I mean? And then to have like boom, like clockwork, just like people laughing yeah. at all these spots that you're hoping is like a fantastic applause. feeling. Yeah, yeah. I was just sure. amazed, like after like how patient people were because we had like some technical difficulties when people were waiting to get in to see it. And uh, people were so patient. Then we showed up, and everybody was chanting, nerd, 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 mm -hmm. and it was great. And then uh, you know the movie started, and, and people went nuts. And then at the end of it, you know, it was kind of uh, uh, late into the night, because we had an intro before the movie, too. So by the time this whole thing ended, I was like, all right, people are probably going to be tired and want to go home. But no, they were, everybody in the whole theater was standing and clapping. And then we went up to do our Q&A, and Everybody was still in. Like, I was looking through the crowd. Every seat was still full, and everybody wait. Everybody was there for the whole Q and A, uh, and it was just an amazing vibe. Yeah, the, the energy was great, and it was like it was kind of the same energy we had on set yeah. between having the great the great cast. And there were so many fans involved that there were extras. Mm -hmm. um, so the the family atmosphere that we had on set really yeah. just pushed on through the screening, and it was it was like yeah. the best feeling ever. And when you ask people to come out to a desert to be an extra in Santa Clarita when it's like 100 degrees and you know you hear about all those you know fires you know here in California and like we had that, that whole location we were at went up in flames the, like the day after we we shot there wow. which could have been bad uh, could have been so yeah. we, we were in some pretty extreme heat and to have like a hundred people come out to that is crazy and they were so patient they you know waited all day till we needed the shots every you know they were patient with everything and they were you know, um, just the same chant, the nerd chant, and uh, it just brought it brought our energy up just to s see people come out to that. Yeah, sure. that, that's amazing. Keep an eye out for the VOD that will drop in like around September 2nd, and then yep. the Blu-ray that will be around early November. Uh, so there's lots of opportunities well, to see. Now we, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Now we like to end all of our interviews. Um, you know, we're Geek Legacy. We embrace our inner geek. Now, would you guys consider yourselves geeks? I know you're the angry video game nerd, but would you consider yourself a geek? A nerd or a geek? Yeah, either one. Which would you? Uh, sure, both. Yeah. What about you, Kevin? I think everyone's got their own inner geek, and I think I think you don't know truly know someone until you know how they are a geek. So I think everyone walking yeah. the streets is a geek in some way. Awesome. Well, can I have each of you look into the camera and say you're a geek? We'll do it one at a time. We'll do Kevin first. Kevin first. I'm a geek. I'm a geek. <laughs> <laughs>